Hey, it's that time of year again. Time to talk about football games. Oh no, sorry, I, me I meant the other football. Oh no, 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 uh, the one played in England. No, uh, with the two nets and the big ball. Fine, soccer. But don't worry if you're not a fan of soccer, you're a fan of video games, and the soccer genre has a multitude of classics and not so classics. Yeah! 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 So lace up your boots, stick on your shin pads, and get ready for some soccer game nonsense. Ah, the 80s, when trousers were awful, Satan ran the UK, and football games looked like this. Match Day, as seen here on the BBC Micro, was the most realistic portrayal of football games at the time. Personally, I don't remember when footy was played in slow motion, with moon gravity, by purple monsters. But at least they kept that bit where the spectator celebrated a goal by turning on badly tuned radios. The first truly great football game was Kickoff, which introduced a host of new features gamers had never seen before. Kickoff was the first game where the ball didn't automatically stick to your player's feet, allowing far more freedom with passing. It also introduced action replays, players with different stats, fouls, yellow and red cards, injuries, injury time, and referees with varying moods. The sequel, released in 1990, was considered the pinnacle of football game design. Until two years later, when a bunch of chaps from Essex got together and made one of the most iconic football games of all time. Sensible Soccer made us all goal-scoring superstar heroes with its feature-packed modes and fine-tuned gameplay. Two years later, Sensible World of Soccer came out with a staggering 1,500 teams and 27,000 players. This truly legendary game was given a HD gloss over and released on Xbox Live Arcade a number of years back. You don't get the satisfying clunk of the Amiga Drive or the awesome extended load times, but for 800 Microsoft Disney dollars, footy fans both young and old should definitely pick this up. The top-down shenanigans continued into the 16-bit era. Bundled with the Sega Mega Drive, or Genesis, and crammed onto a cartridge alongside Super Hang-On and Columns, was Italian 90. It was bloody terrible. Impossible to see where you were passing the ball, goalkeepers with rubber spines, and a world map that looked like it had been drawn by a three-year-old with crayons between its toes. After the World Cup, it was rebranded Sega Soccer, so that a whole new generation could fall out of love with the beautiful game all over again. They literally changed the opening titles. They even kept that weird grunt at the start. Years later, the similarly looking Empire Soccer came out on the Amiga, which was equally as crap, but quite handy if you wanted your flatmates to think you were a sex pest, as every time you did a slight tackle in the game, it sounded like you were touching yourself. Just pick up your joystick, stick up the volume, and tackle the opposition to bits. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, come on. Yeah. As football games became increasingly popular, copyright and licensing became even more important. So too did having some football heroes mug on the front of the box. Gaza's done it, Graham Souness has done it, twice in fact, lending his famous moustache to one management game and the freakish geometrical nightmare Graham Souness Vector Soccer. But nobody's taken player licensing quite as seriously as Soccer Saturday's very own Chris Kamara. Chris Kamara's Street Soccer focused on five-a-side football, allowing PlayStation 1 owners to play in some of Kami's favourite locales, including Easter Island, a volcano, and everybody's favourite, the inside of a castle. My favourite part was the team selection screen. Just check out all those random people wearing culturally accurate clothing. They even have the stereotypical Englishman, a short black guy with a blonde beard. It's really quite awful, I can never seem to actually score in this game, not even penalties. Chris Kamara commentates over every game, and apparently he even performed the game's motion capture. Wow, great job. They even captured that trick where the ball magically jumps with him. Realism overload. But if licensing football players isn't enough, how about entire clubs? Club football, released on the PlayStation 2 and Xbox, had no less than 18 separate editions, including Manchester United, Chelsea and Arsenal, to Bayern Munchkin, Ajax and Borussia... 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 Leeds. Each game came with its own super imaginative box art, and in the case of Chelsea's, a special mode where you could sleep with all your friends' wives, get kicked in the face by Abu Dhabi, and forget how to defend in the knockout stages of the World Cup. The football game genre has had its fair share of novelty titles too. There was controversial foul-em-up red card, apparently Ryan Shawcross is a fan. Yeah! 
Then there's 2D platformer Soccer Kid, which came out around the time of USA 94. Better still, Mario Strikers Charge for the Wii, which you could easily fob off with some kiddie nonsense, is actually one of the best multiplayer games available on the Wii. Heavily influenced by Sega Soccer Slam, its actual likeness to the game of football is arguable, but if you own a Wii and frequently have mates over, it's definitely worth picking up. Back in the mid-90s, FIFA stepped onto the pits with its crazy isometric but revolutionary football series. It was incredibly popular, in fact maybe a bit too popular as EA started releasing games to commemorate any old nonsense. As this was going on, the Japanese developed international superstar soccer was rising in popularity. ISS 64 was superb, and by the time the series arrived on PlayStation 2, all bets were off. And thus began one of the longest running rivalries in video game history, one that Konami eventually took the lead on with their fantastic Pro Evolution series known as Winning Eleven in Asia. Yeah, I know, I ran out of football jerseys. Then in 2000, like a phoenix from the flames, EA returned with a brand new type of FIFA game. It caught the eye of the Pro Ev faithful, myself included, and by the time FIFA Online was released it was very difficult not to ignore the FIFA revolution. The ebb and flow of quality we enjoyed in years past has now been replaced by two games that play incredibly well in their own unique ways. Both series include a vast array of gameplay modes and some brilliantly fine-tuned on-pitch action. This year's Pro Ev promises clever off-the-ball AI and a bunch of new career and manager modes, while EA have overhauled FIFA's defensive game by making dispossessing tougher and more involved. You can no longer just hold down the second defender press button and pick up the scraps. It's like no other rivalry in gaming, the decision to buy Pro Ev or FIFA now weighs so much on which one you're most used to and, critically, which one your friends play. It's almost like following a club. We love and support our favourite games and will readily stand up for them against opposition fans. It's this support and popularity which has allowed publishers to pour resources into creating the brilliant football games we now enjoy today. And it's that passion for the game that has made soccer games among the most progressive sports genre in gaming history. So, what are your favourite football games? Do you fly the flag for FIFA or Pro Ev? Tell us in the comment box below. Oh, and if you're a Manchester United fan, be sure to tell me how you'd 8-2 be an Arsenal supporter. Ugh.